We are here today in New York during Climate Week and the UN General Assembly, coming together with CEOs and executives from all walks of life to hear directly from them on how they can help to create sustainable impact through their businesses. With its rich natural resources, cutting edge innovation and diverse workforce, Canada is uniquely positioned to lead the transition to a greener, more sustainable global economy. Laurel, hi, I'm Allison. Hi, nice to meet you. Great to meet you, let's walk. Great. Invest in Canada, the country's investment promotion agency, is driving both national economic growth and climate action by attracting investments in sectors such as EV and battery manufacturing, clean energy, agritech, and life sciences. In this interview, we'll be speaking with Laurel Broughton, Invest in Canada's CEO about how Canada is leading the way in green energy projects and working towards its ambitious net zero emissions target by 2050. We were at COP last year um, and I had been at COP previously and this is my first time at Climate Week and we're really able to bring Canada's story and tell our message to the world about how much, how strong our commitments are. What are your goals while you're here? My goals are to tell Canada's story, to talk about the commitments that we've made to get the planet to a net zero carbon future. And Canada has a great track record. Last year, I understand you had a report and last year showed that you had the highest number of sustainable investments in history. Can you, can you tell us why this happened? Well, you're absolutely right. We had an incredible year with a 102% increase year over year in sustainable investments coming into Canada. Um, and that flows from our commitment to look around the world and source out those transformative investments and bring them to Canada. Whether it's in energy transition, sustainable aviation fuels, hydrogen, electric vehicles, battery supply chain, alternative proteins, um, all of those industries are part of a sustainability agenda. And that's what our focus is. At Invest in Canada, we really want to build industry for an economy of the future. And you can't do that without focusing on sustainable investments. So you're just not talking the talk, you're walking the walk. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, it really is commendable to see what Canada is doing, but at the same time, the energy transition, it's, it's a complex undertaking, and not all countries can do what, what you're doing, because there is a major financing gap when it comes to creating these sort of transformational projects. Do you have any ideas about solutions for other countries, maybe that they could do? Well, you're absolutely right. And I think that's one of the important reasons that we're here in New York City, which is really the hub of finance, to talk about and recognize uh, the financial investments that are necessary for this transition. It's really a green revolution and significant investments need to come forward. So you really need everyone at the table. You need companies who are gonna be at the table with finding those solutions, innovating, and you need government who comes to the table to uh, both really support initiatives to get them through to commercial viability because mm -hmm. we're really asking many many industries to transition to change the way that they've done things for maybe a hundred years <laughs> maybe since the industrial yeah. revolution we're saying join this green revolution so yeah. canada has put together a really comprehensive set of innovative tax credits um, mm -hmm. and programs so they focus on green technology clean electricity uh, clean and green hydrogen, carbon management, um, and really bring together a set of tools and incentives to help bridge projects through that innovation stage until they can get to commercial viability. All right, so let's talk about some of the programs and funding sources. Absolutely. So first of all, tax credits, a model that has been really specifically targeted to the clean sector, whether it's clean hydrogen, clean electricity, electric vehicles, uh, hyd hydrogen production, all of those things. There's also a number of programs, Canada Growth Fund, the Canada Infrastructure Bank, whose raison d'etre, so the reason that they are there is to drive innovation and help build out this new future. So that's at a federal level. You also have provinces who have come forward, such as the province of Alberta, who has specifically come forward with incentives for carbon management, because that's an area of expertise that they have. So you're able to put that together on top of Canada already having one of the um, most um, competitive tax rates in the G7. I think that provides a really strong package uh, that can wrap around these initiatives that are trying to drive change. And we've been recognized for that. 
Reistead Energy Rankings, uh, the Bloomberg NEF Battery Rankings have all put Canada in the one and two position globally because of these types of supports and many other facets that I think Canada brings to the table. So it seems incentives are important and maybe that's something other countries should acknowledge. But I'm curious how Canada compares to other jurisdictions like the United States and other European countries um, that are also options for global investors who are seeking to establish these transition projects. Canada has come to the table, as I said, with incentives um, and with a competitive framework around these initiatives. The other pieces to that, because it's always a comprehensive suite of services that you need to put around it our labor force, our free trade agreements. 51 countries around the world have free trade agreements with Canada and that really allows you to set up your operations in Canada and trade that product freely around the world. Our geographic location, closest ports to Europe, that is driving the discussion that's happening between Europe and Canada about Canada being a provider of hydrogen and in particular the Germany-Canada Hydrogen Alliance being established. The other side of the country, the West Coast, uh, is very, very close to all the growing jurisdictions in Asia and of course our neighbor to the south, the United States, with a very integrated historical supply chain in the automotive sector as just one example. And so what you're seeing are U.S. automotive companies now investing in critical minerals in Canada. So I think that's all coming together. Canada's been acknowledged and recognized for many years of, as an energy powerhouse, and this energy powerhouse is now driving transition to clean energy, um, and it's being recognized around the world, and that's something that we are talking to CEO, CEOs about daily. And so, yeah, you do speak with CEOs around the world. I'm curious what they're telling you that they're looking for. CEOs are telling us that they're looking for a place where they will find talent, a place where they will get green electricity. That is an absolutely key part of the conversation that we're having right now. Because as you hear, we are in climate week. And if you think about the climate commitments, which are scope one and two broader commitments, you need to be having green electricity to operate your facility. Canada has 83% non-emitting electricity across, across the country. That's really important for CEOs, in addition to the incentives, the trade opportunities, uh, the team, uh, and the recognition, and the natural resources. So I really think Canada has it all when you're looking to establish a sustainable uh, operation for the future. And I think that we have proven that point in the increase in investments that we've seen in Canada year over year. Exactly. What does your team do to help these folks? Well, that's a great question. And uh, what we do is really try to make the decision process as straightforward as possible. You have a question about a tax credit, we're going to get you that answer. You want to understand how a regulation would impact you, we're getting you that answer. You want to know who do I need to meet to make the decision to come to Canada? Where do I need to go? What are the places I should look? We really take and work with you on an individual basis to help you answer those questions so that we can secure those most transformative investments into Canada. So our team really becomes part of your team. We work with you from the beginning of maybe talking to you about Canada's value proposition and saying, why should you think about Canada? Consider Canada, think about it for your second home all the way to the day that you open uh, your major facility, really trying to make sure that that process is smooth and simple and you have all the answers that you're looking for. Because we believe when we do that, you will make the decision to choose Canada. All right, so we have seen many conversations around energy transition technologies like carbon capture and storage and liquefied natural gas. All of this may help bridge the gap between our current energy mix and a net zero economy, but they're not fully renewable energy systems. I'm curious to see and to hear your perspective on this. Well, absolutely, net zero carbon is our North Star. That is what we're focused yeah. on. But we know that it's going to be a transition. And so those alternative fuels, uh, transition pathways are really important to get us from where we are today to where we need to be tomorrow. We're here in climate week. The theme is urgency and we feel that urgency. And so some of these transition technologies, fuels, they help us move faster. So if, for example, you think about carbon capture and storage, that has been uh, a technology that's been developed in Canada for many, many years with expertise. Um, in fact, eight big expert uh, centers in Canada working to do that work. 
that is a methodology that is going to be a path for hard to abate industries like steel as an example. Um, and so when you use that technology, you're going to be able to transition faster. Use the technology that you have available to you right now, but have it be emitting no carbon into the atmosphere. And Canada's innovation clearly is moving it forward as well. Absolutely, Canada has a long history um, as an energy powerhouse, uh, primarily out in Western Canada, which is where I'm from. So we know LNG will also be part of the solution, liquefied natural gas, uh, which Canada has in abundance. We are seeing some really innovative projects come forward right now where they're electrifying and they're using best-in-class technology to reduce the emissions uh, as much as possible. LNG, carbon management, carbon capture and storage, these are all going to be mechanisms that help us bridge the gap to transition to get ourselves closer and faster to net zero. Okay, let's, let's talk about EVs for a minute, specifically EV battery companies, because in recent months, um, you know, they've either delayed or scaled back investments. What conclusions do you think we should draw from this about the long-term viability of this industry and, and its potential for the future? I feel confident that the long-term viability of this industry is strong. My experience in economic development over 10 years or in all of the other aspects of the career that I've had over 30 years, we never thought it would be a straight line. There is always going to be bumps along the road, but we're going in the right direction. So for example, in Canada, we are seeing a 35% increase year over year in terms of the purchase of electric vehicles. We know the industry is committed, is innovating, is developing new products all the time, is listening to consumers and saying, okay, you have range anxiety, we're going to respond to that. So I feel the industry will continue to evolve, consumers will continue to respond, and they will do that because everybody's working on this together and recognize, again, our North Star, net zero. Transportation is a huge part of emissions and we need to drive that agenda. Canada is being recognized um, and has built out a battery supply chain, which is incredibly green, being acknowledged by Bloomberg NEF, being recognized around the world. So we're committed to it. We're in it for the long haul. Um, and we believe that uh, consumers and the auto industry is also committed. Laurel, it's been such a pleasure talking with you and learning all about Canada's achievements. Thanks for your time today. It's my pleasure. Last year, sustainable projects made up 29% of total announced foreign direct investment projects in Canada, which is an achievement Invest in Canada is proud of and will look to continue to improve. Foreign direct investment can play a pivotal role in driving a more sustainable future, innovative practices, and economic growth, both at the country level and on a global scale. Invest in Canada hopes to help increase consideration of Canada as a green investment destination globally and that there can be continued collaboration with stakeholders to support more innovation in renewable energy and green technologies to help build a more sustainable future all across the country.